a video. This is Sedona Lee, and it is New Year's Eve 2007. In fact, there's about, I don't know, eight minutes left of this year. I've been drinking cognac with my father-in-law, and um, now we're about to go up on the hill to explode these. Here is the Valiumated dog, and this is the fireworks that required the Valium. <laughs> Valiumated dog, fireworks. And for anybody that might be interested, I really hope you have a great 2008. So what is it like going to Norwegian language school as an American? Well. My first day of school, I sit down next to these two Brazilian chicks and Portuguese, and, and I hear all kinds of languages going on around me, everything except English. And uh, this guy comes and he sits down to me, next to me, and, every, and the teacher introduces him. This is so-and-so from Afghanistan. Now everybody go around the class and introduce yourselves in Norwegian. So, uh, my name's Sarah, I'm from America. He looks at me. Now all I hear is George Bush. I don't have a fatwa on me. We're friends now. Thank goodness you can overcome your own president. Hmm? Andreas, when did you get the camera? I... Happy New Year! I don't think it. Oh, there you are! <laughs> put, the, put the damn thing closer to your hair! <laughs> So every afternoon we go and socialize with other classes to practice using our language skills. And I've gotten some interesting comments about uh, what the USA is all about. Today I was told, all Americans eat so much meat. So I looked at the Brazilian and said in Norwegian, no, we only eat Brazilians. Everyone's going ape shit everywhere, Eric. I don't know where to film. I'm just sort of panning. Imagine that trillions of dollars have been going on just here. Oh, shit. Just here. We can stand here and shoot up all the time by ourselves. Oh, fucking it. We can stand here and shoot up just by ourselves for a good half hour. Just us. Here we, we go. Spend $100. I think the most interesting thing that I've learned from being here this time around is I've traveled here on a regular basis and so here in 2000 everybody was like, ah well, that George Bush guy seems a little rude. But there was lots and lots of goodwill and everything was all good. And then in 2004, the feedback of the time was, you know what, your government's pretty fucked, look at what they're doing. And look at <laughs> What's up with all them Christian folk being all nuts about their own politics and didn't y'all invent separation of church and state and, you know, just, you know, what's up with your government? Now that I'm here in 2008, the blame, my dear friends, rests squarely on the population. And based on some of the questions that I've received and the things that I have been unable to answer on behalf of 330 million people, I guess to some extent they're right. We let those slime balls stay there for so long that now we've kind of gotten to a point where there's no one else to blame but us. Uh, and that's a strange feeling, I gotta be honest with you. I, it's very odd to have strangers come up to me and go, America is a cancer. now is what was missing in my education as a kid, aside from the fact that I never went back and took another geography class after the world changed. I don't know anything about Burma. I don't know anything about uh, Morocco. I don't know anything about... I don't even know anything about Turkey and uh, or Belgium or... and all of these people they come from all walks of life being anything from janitors to lawyers you know, 
Um, every single one of them, without exception, speaks more than one language already and are coming in to learn another one. So they're bilingual, trilingual, trilingual or quadlingual already. And there I am going, uh, je parle français un petit peu, il hable espagnol a little, you know. You feel kind of stupid. And then starting with a language all by itself too. I'm a wordsmith, I write, that's what I do, and now I'm illiterate in the language that I'm supposed to know. And that's frustrating. I have a far greater respect for people in America who cannot read English for whatever reason, whether or not it's because of a lack of schooling or a lack of knowledge of the language. Oh my god, it's hard. Respect, respect to the illiterate folk. for somebody with PTSD. Seriously though, this kind of shit you can't see in America. This is the Allison Ford. Let's try again after cognac. This is the Allison Fjord. I'm smoking a fucking Cuban cigar. The children retreated here is really, really fantastic. I'll give you, yesterday I was at, no, not yesterday, Friday I was at school, standing on the school grounds having a cigarette, first of all. And the school that I'm in is an elementary school, a middle school, and an adult school all in one building. And everybody is out playing on the playground, and I'm watching the kids play, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom! Shitload of fireworks go off from New Year's. And the entire schoolyard sort of stopped and looked around. Everybody looked at the teacher, and the teacher went, eh. And the continue, kids continued playing. Now, you and I know as Americans, if that had happened on the schoolyard <laughs> of an elementary or middle school in America, the 5 o'clock news would be covering it live, the SWAT team would be there, the parents would be at the perimeter going, let me get to my baby, it's a terrorist attack. Oh yeah, big one, big one. Somebody actually signals a fucking big old thingy. It's uh, helpful when you know that it's actually 2008. On New Year's, uh, a bunch of kids uh, blew up a bunch of light poles. <laughs> Somebody blew up their house, they blew it off their foundations and moved it like six inches and it came back down. Now these kids didn't get arrested, they didn't get, you know, they're not in jail for acts of extreme terrorism or anything like that. Instead, everybody just casually takes a picture of these kids on their phone cameras. <laughs> so their pictures are on the front page of the news instead. <laughs> Teen scene blowing up light pole. There's a picture of the kid. Uh, <laughs> it's wonderful, man. It is so interesting to just be around people that are so much less uptight. When did America get so uptight? I, I mean, that is just one thing that has really struck me. I mean, just smoking on campus alone. I mean, I could do that when I was in high school back in a hundred years ago, but uh, it was just really weird to be back in that sort of relaxed, it's all good, kids are kids, there's limits, yeah, there's boundaries, yeah, but there doesn't need to be hysterica, hysteria every five fucking seconds. <laughs> and that's it for me, live video, peace.